You may hear construction noises in the background. I'm sorry for that. But a while ago, somebody asked me about the difference between graphic EQ and true EQ, and I explained it to that person. But there was something that I didn't realize about it until I grabbed an audio analyzer and connected to my mixer and saw exactly what's going on with each EQ. And that analyzer is called Open Sound Meter. You can download it for free and try this yourself. But I thought I would share this with you because it was an eye opener for me and hopefully it will be for you. So let's get into it. Here's the setup very briefly. I'm generating pink noise on the main left right and then I am sending the main left right to matrices. So I have matrix one, two linked and matrix three, four linked and matrix five, six linked. And the main left right with the pink noise is going to all the matrices matrices and on matrix 1 2 I have the stereo graphic EQ and on matrix 3 4 I have the stereo true EQ and on matrix 5 6 I don't have anything because this is the reference signal I'm gonna compare the unaffected pink noise to the affected pink noise to see what that EQ is doing to the sound here I am in open sound meter the blue trace is gonna be the graphic EQ and the green trace is gonna be the true EQ first realization I had about the graphic EQ is that if I pull a frequency all the way down and you look at this, the Q is actually not that narrow. I always assumed that the graphic EQ would have a narrower Q, so you can cut just that frequency, but it's kind of wide. And how wide exactly is it? We can figure that out. Let's create a filter, and I'm gonna make that a peak filter, and select the frequency that I moved on the graphic EQ, which is 250 hertz, and I'm gonna cut it 15 dB, because that's what I did on the graphic EQ, and I'm gonna start raising the Q, until I match that curve. Okay, so first of all, we can see it's not exactly cutting 15 dB. So let's raise that a little bit. The Q is roughly 4.2, which is less than half of what a parametric EQ can do. Because if I go to a parametric EQ, 250 hertz, and pull it out minus 15 dB, and here I can go with the Q up to 10. The yellow trace is the parametric EQ, and the pink trace is the graphic EQ. Look how much wider is the graphic EQ, which you would use normally to notch out frequencies that are feeding back. So that's the first realization. Parametric EQ is a lot more effective at just notching out this frequency as narrow as possible. Something else about the graphic EQ is that people always say don't boost frequencies with the graphic EQ. And I'm going to show you why. If I boost frequencies that are next to each other like so, look what happens. It creates a mess. This is really ugly. And if you take out frequencies that are next to each other, you're removing a lot of sound. You are not just taking out these frequencies, you are scooping everything with it. So that's why if you do too much on the graphic EQ, you will notice that you're losing level, you're losing volume, because it's actually taking away a lot of the signal. And the reason is that the Q isn't that narrow. So graphic EQ versus parametric, when would you want to use a graphic EQ? Just when you need more bands than five or six. A parametric EQ is superior in every possible way to a graphic EQ. But a graphic EQ just has has more bands. Okay, now let's look at the true EQ. If I do the same exact move, cut 250 hertz all the way down, look what happens. It creates that cut before the frequency and after it. You can see what's happening. The blue is the graphic EQ, the green is the true EQ. What is beneficial with the true EQ is that if you boost frequencies with it, you can actually create some very smooth curve. Okay, so let me boost these all the way up. And you can see it's very flat, unlike the graphic EQ. So if I do the same moves with it, first of all, it boosts a lot more. So with the graphic EQ, the peaks are up to plus 24 dB, whereas with the true EQ, it's 15. So if I'm boosting 15 dB on the true EQ, it's actually 15 dB. If I'm boosting 15 dB on the graphic EQ with bands that are next to each other, you have a much louder boost. But with the true EQ, you get that dip after the boost. With the graphic EQ, you don't get that. So let's say that you have a kind of steep attenuation of the high frequencies in your speakers and you want to boost that to make it flatter. With a true EQ, if you do that, you can create a very smooth curve. Okay, so that's the true EQ, smooth curve. 
That's the graphic EQ, very bumpy. So whether you want to boost a whole range of frequencies all together without bending it, or whether you want to bend it very smoothly, True EQ will do a much better job than graphic EQ. Never boost with the graphic EQ. It looks awful and sounds awful. I already showed you why a parametric EQ is superior to a graphic EQ for fighting feedback, but in case you need more bands and a parametric EQ doesn't have enough bands for you, you have to use a graphic EQ. But what if you use a True EQ? Let's see what happens. If you cut with the graphic EQ, you already saw that this is what happens. And if you cut with a true EQ, this is what happens. So when you're cutting with a true EQ, it creates these bumps before and after the cut. It's boosting a little bit those frequencies around the cut and it doesn't fight feedback as well as a graphic EQ. So the best EQ for fighting feedback is a parametric. If you don't have enough bands for some reason on your parametric EQ, you can use a graphic EQ, although it's not as good as the parametric and the true EQ is really bad at fighting feedback. Even though it may not seem apparent on the graph, if you try it in real life, the true EQ just doesn't cut it for fighting feedback. However, you can do very smooth boosts with it, unlike the graphic EQ. We mix with our ears, not with our eyes, but seeing it helps you understand things more quickly and more easily. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and click on the video on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.